Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the She's Making an Impact podcast. I'm your host, Rachel and Go. Today, we are talking all about time management, but how it's killing your productivity. So essentially, like how to become a productivity superhero. Um, I brought on Tanya Dalton. She's a best-selling author, motivational speaker, nationally recognized productivity expert. She helps executives and entrepreneurs step into purposeful leadership. Um, her books have been translated into eight languages around the world. Her first book, The Joy of Missing Out, was named a top 10 business book of the year by Fortune Magazine. Um, her podcast, The Intentional Advantage, has received millions of downloads from listeners around the world. She's a featured expert on several networks, including NBC, Fox, is a VIP contributor for Entrepreneur and Forbes. Um, she is considered a thought leader in purposeful productivity and leadership by some of the world's leading publications, including Forbes, Fast Company, and Real Simple. Uh, basically, she's a powerhouse, and I'm really excited uh, to dive into this conversation and really um, just share with you her zone of genius and how it's going to support you and be more purposeful, productive, and kick some bute in your business. So let's dive in. Hey, Tanya, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to dive in. Why don't you just start off, tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Yeah, so I am a speaker, a author, a founder of a multi-million dollar company, a mom, lots of things, <laughs> lots of hats that I wear. Yeah. But, um, you know, I just actually recently gave an Oxford talk. So I'm a productivity expert, but I really love people to understand that productivity is so much more than just who we are from nine o'clock to five o'clock or whatever hours you work. It's really about being intentional and living your life on your terms. So that's, that's what I do. I talk about productivity. I help people find meaning in their lives and their jobs and their, their work and their relationships. Yeah. How'd you get into that? Well, I started my first business in 2008 with $50. So it was supposed to just be this side thing that I did while my kids were really little. And my husband was traveling for like three or four weeks at a time. So I started with this business with 50 bucks. And I had a conversation with my husband who was on the other side of the planet at the time. And I realized that he was not happy with being gone all the time. He said, I'm missing everything, all the milestones, all the moments. And so I stood in my bright yellow kitchen, hung up the phone with him, and I made a big, bold decision that I was going to grow that little side hobby business into something that would really create this freedom for my family, the lifestyle freedom, the time freedom, the financial freedom, and he could come and work alongside of me, which was a pretty big, bold decision for someone who had zero business experience. I had been yeah. a teacher <laughs> previously never even took a business class in college. And yet I sat down that night, created the plan for myself, created systems. And I figured out how I was going to make it work because I was still a mom with two small kids and a husband who traveled nonstop. And within about a year, I was able to make that goal happen. I was able wow. to absorb his MBA income and he came and started working for me in 2009. So he has been working for me since 2009, which has been fabulous for us. And then, you know, everything was going great, doing well. We ended up moving to Asheville, North Carolina, because we have location freedom. So why yeah. not? And uh, I looked at my husband about a year after we moved here and I said, I love you. I love working with you, but I don't love what we're doing. I mean, this was supposed to be this side thing that I was doing just for 50 bucks. And so I had to sit down and really make some big decisions again, make some big, bold choices I, you know, really took some time to discover what was it I really wanted to do. I loved empowering women. I loved, you know, teaching. Once a teacher, always a teacher. And then I love productivity because that's what allowed me to scale and grow my business the way that I had. And I was doing a lot of small business coaching and consulting with other women. And I was noticing they weren't doing things the way that I was. Like they were running themselves ragged. And here I was really having a thriving personal life while having a thriving business so that's how Inkwell Press Productivity Co. was born, was this like thread that connected these three very unrelated, disconnected things. I yeah. connected them together. So I started Inkwell Press and scaled that to seven figures in less than 18 months. Wow. Before you knew it, we were in stores, Office Depot, Office Max, Barnes & Noble. And uh, from there, I was really able to focus then on the service side of my business, doing the podcast. And then all of a sudden I started having publishing houses reaching out to me. 
I had some offers from publishing houses to write my books. I wrote two books with Harper Collins. And now I'm I'm doing more speaking. I'm leaning more into the messaging of my books and as well as the products. And it's been fantastic. It's been a fabulous twisted road to get to where I am today. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so let's talk productivity. You said something, uh, time management is killing your productivity. So can we dive into, into that one? Because people are probably like, what? Well, I think that's the thing is people, we get really obsessed with managing our time. Time management, people feel is so connected to productivity. And that's why I just had my Oxford talk come out and it's called time management is killing your productivity. Because the truth is we cannot manage time. It's like trying to wrestle a bear, right? Mm -hmm. Time is just time. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Yeah. You, me, Beyonce, same 24. It's all in how we choose to prioritize. It's how we choose to spend our time. So, you know, there's this whole pervasive belief too in our society that, you know, a 40 hour work week is the standard, right? And this is part of what I talk about in my Oxford talk. We have this belief that we have to work 40 hours. And for a lot of entrepreneurs, it's beyond 40 hours. Mm -hmm. But really the 40 hours, it comes from Henry Ford. It comes from the factory days. Yeah. 1926 is when the 40 hour work week was established. Wow. Same time they were using mercury and arsenic to cure diseases. So it's an outdated model. I yeah. think we can all agree, right? But we have this belief that if we're not putting in the time, we're not being productive. And this is why we end up filling up our days, running ourselves ragged, checking a thousand things off our to-do list, but falling into bed, feeling exhausted, feeling overwhelmed, and somehow yet feeling like we haven't done enough, right? Yeah. Because we're, we're focusing in on how much time did I spend? How many tasks did I accomplish? Instead of focusing in on the quality, how do I feel about the work I did today? Did I do the work that matters? Did I do things that were important to me? And I'm talking about for myself, I'm talking about for my team, I'm talking about my team at work and my team at home, right? My family is my team as well. So it's really about shifting from a time-focused way of living and shifting to a quality-focused way of living. And that's really, at its heart, a lot of intentionality. Yeah, I love that. And I love the word and like just intentionality. I read um, John Maxwell's book about, what is it called? Intentional living by John. Yeah. John mm -hmm. Maxwell. Um, so how do we be intentional in our businesses? What does that look like for us as entrepreneurs? That's such a good question. Cause I think one of the big struggles entrepreneurs have, first of all, is we're trying to manage time and yet we find ourselves working 80, hundred hours a week when we left corporate America for the time freedom, yeah. <laughs> yet we're chaining ourselves to our phone and to our desks. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the problem I find with a lot of entrepreneurs, and I can say this because I have fallen in this trap myself, oftentimes we are able to teach the lessons because we have lived the lessons, <laughs> meaning we have lived those failures, is trying to do too much, trying to sell to every single client, trying to have more products, more services, more, 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 because we think that's going to bring in more revenue. We think that's what's going to take us to the next level. We think that's what's going to help us scale when the truth is doing less doing fewer, going deeper with our clients, with our products, with our services is actually going to help us achieve more and scale faster. You know, when I achieve seven figures in my business, people often ask me like, oh, how big was your team? You must have had a crazy team. I'm like me, my husband, John, and a part-time employee. Yeah. There's this whole belief that more equals more. And if you get to the heart of what it is you're trying to accomplish, whether we're talking about dialing in that ideal avatar of who your client is or dialing in with what work matters, which I'm happy to talk about, yeah, that's when we start to move the needle. And it takes far less effort to get ourselves shifted in the right direction when we do that. So it's getting through all that clutter, getting through the mess and really getting to the heart of what do I do? Why do I do it? Who do I do it for? I love that. Uh, what was your offer? that you had with the million dollar business with you, your husband and a part-time employee? Well, we were selling uh, physical products, okay. which is always something very different because a lot of people are like, ooh, physical products, that sounds so fun. And I'm like, freighting, manufacturing, uh -huh. manufacturing is a whole different set of issues. Right. But it was a $50 product. So it was a $50 product. So not something that was like super high end. Yeah. We were selling a physical planner. 
uh, weekly planners is what we started off with. We now have daily planners and all different kinds of planners uh, and journals through Inkwell Press, but that's what we started with, a $50 product, and we were able to scale that to seven figures. That's awesome. Um, okay, so what work matters? You said you wanted to dive into that. So what actually yeah. matters? Because I, I see this all the time of like students might come into our program and then I see that they're like, I don't have time to do all these things, but they're spending all this time in Canva, like creating graphics. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. have the time, but you're just not using it wisely. Exactly. That's the thing is we all have that same amount of time. You and your competitors and other business owners, people in your industry, out of your, we all have that same amount of time. It's choosing where, and not just where we want to focus. If, if you're an entrepreneur and you're running, you know, a team, it's also where your team is focusing as well. Mm -hmm. So one of my very favorite tools to use is Pareto principle. When I'm dialing into what's most important, people call Pareto principle, the 80, 20 rule, but I don't like to call it that. I just shot a video and did an article for Forbes about it because it's not always 80, 20. It's not always 20% equals 80%. It's not always 100, 100, you know, equals 100. But basically what Pareto principle says is it's the vital few tasks. It's the, it's focusing in on the few tasks that move the business forward or that make the biggest impact. And a lot of times we think, oh, I need more products. So we spend a lot of time having all these different offers and all these different services trying to hit everybody's needs and wants. And in doing that, we neglect the most important things that are actually going to drive the business forward. So you can do this in lots of ways. You can, most of us can go in the back end of wherever you're hosting your website, whether that's, you know, Shopify or WordPress and some of those things and pull out reports of, okay, how much money did each one of my offers make? What, and start ranking them. And you're going to start to see there's a vital few. There's going to be, you know, maybe 15% of your offerings are driving and pulling in 70%, 80% of the revenue you're making. Same with your client list. You can pull your client list and start looking, hey, who are my vital few? Who are the big clients that are bringing us the most revenue? Who are also probably also referring the most amazing customers to you as well, right? What we tend to do is we give everyone, all of our clients, all of our customers equal attention. When the truth is we should be focusing in on the vital few, on the 15 to 20% of our clients that actually bring in the most of the majority of our revenue, dive in deeper with them. It's not to say you're going to ignore the other people. It's just, they're not your focus. So you spend more time with that vital few. That's how you're going to start to make a difference. And all of this is very simple to do. If you pull the numbers, if you start looking at the metrics and that helps you really understand, oh, this is where I need to spend my time. Spending, you know, three hours on Canva trying to pick just the right font for the ad, probably not the best use of your time. Thinking about who your ideal customer is, that customer that you love working with and they love working with you. Thinking about what's the message that's going to hit them, right? That vital few of your customers, that's going to make a difference. And that's what's going to make a difference. Not the, you know, font or what color have I used or any of that kind of extra, which is fun, but not really good use of your time. Yeah. Okay. What would you say to the mom entrepreneur? So let's look at, I told you about my situation right now. Kids are in like half day (laughs) camps over the summer, which I'm like, oh my gosh. So let's say we have, you know, two hours to work and then we're doing the driving, the kids, the, all of the things. What would you say to, you know, me and that, or someone else that's listening, um, that's going to be the best use of our time. And so we can actually like move the needle during these times of sheer chaos. <laughs> oh yeah. And we all have them, honestly. I mean, as I mentioned, my first business, I started with two kids playing at my feet, mm-hmm. literally playing at my feet. Yeah. So my days when I was uh, getting started, My big days were Tuesdays and Thursdays because it was Mother's Day out and preschool. (laughs) So those were the days where I could could spend more time on my business. And the other days I had to go lighter. So one of the things that I think was such a game changer and allowed me to scale really quickly with having very limited hours was theming my days, having a theme for each day. So Mondays was my marketing Mondays. Tuesdays were for team building, team Tuesdays. Wednesdays were for warehouse Wednesdays, things like that. So on Monday, I would go deep with marketing and I would block off more of my calendar to focus in on marketing. 
And what happens is you get into the state of flow, right? Where it's like, oh, this is easier. I'm already in that mindset. I'm already thinking about these things. I think what happens a lot of times as business owners, we're wearing all the hats at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't work, right? We put on one hat, we wear it, then we take that hat off and then we put on the operations hat or we put on the finance hat or we put on whatever hat it is, right? So on Mondays, I dive deep with marketing. My marketing team, the people who work with me, who are on my marketing team, they know Monday is for marketing. Therefore, they know they're going to have FaceTime with me. So they're not pinging me other times on Thursday with something trivial. They know they're going to have time with me. So that eliminates a lot of that extra that happens at other time. Now, is it going to happen that, you know, you have to meet with marketing on Thursday because something has cropped up or is there some issue? Absolutely. Again, you're not ignoring the rest of the tasks. It's kind of like what we talked about with Pareto principle. It's just you're giving a focus to that day's theme. And maybe your theme, your day is divided into two themes or three themes, but it's creating these containers where you're going deep. My whole philosophy is I want to go deep in life. I want to go deep in my relationships. I want to go deep in the work that I'm doing. I want to go deep in everything. I don't want to go shallow. And that's what ends up happening when you try to spread yourself out everywhere. We end up going shallow and we start checking things off the list, but they're not really the big things. They're not the things that are going to actually help you get to that vision of where it is you want your business to go in the next five years, the next 10 years and beyond. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who maybe they're around like the, the 100K mark and they want to grow beyond that? How can they be intentional with their time? What are the things that they should be focused on of what matters most in order for them to grow mm -hmm. beyond that? Well, I'll tell you, because people really love, they're like, tell me what three things I need to do. And I'm going to tell you this. I can't tell you what three things, because you're going to need to look at it because everybody's business is different. Mm -hmm. Cookie cutter strategies don't work for anyone, right? One size fits all fits nobody. It's like a one size fits all shirt. It's way too big or way too small. It's not going to work. So what I would say is, first of all, really be clear about your ideal avatar. What we talked about earlier, who is it you love working with. Stop trying to work with everyone because then you don't stand for anything, right? Get really clear on who that ideal avatar is. Dive deep. Understand. I know with my ideal avatar, I know where she shops. I know how she met her husband. I know what kinds of things she does in her spare time. I know what she does when she's stressed. Really go deep with some of that. Again, that whole idea, right, of going deep. So getting really clear on that. Do that Pareto principle exercise of pulling out your offerings figure out, hey, wait a minute, we're spending a month promoting a <laughs> promoting, you know, some offering or service and it's not even bringing in any revenue. Okay, let's clear our plate. Let's get rid of those. Let's figure out a plan for getting rid of those. So again, we can focus in on the vital few, right? Um, and really creating that clarity and getting that vision. If you're at the 100K mark or you're getting close to it, you probably have contractors, team members of some sort. And team doesn't have to be W2s. It can be part-timers, it can be 1099ers, but really making sure that they are clear on where you're going. I think that's one of the big mistakes a lot of times we make is we feel like we hold the vision, we know where we're wanting to go, and then we're frustrated that nobody else is moving in that same direction. We have to communicate it. And the truth is you cannot over-communicate your priorities. You need to make it really, really clear. So you talk about it in all the meetings. You talk about it whenever you're meeting. Hey, how are we doing on the priorities? Do you remember what the priorities are for this quarter? Where are we going? We want to make sure everyone's on board because that means less managing. They know where we're going, just like you do, and then you're moving in the same direction. So there's a couple of tips and things that you can do to really get yourself over that six-figure hump, which can sometimes be a challenge to get to that point. Cool. Um, can you talk about your 5P framework? Yeah. Well, I think this is the thing is, you know, people feel like either structuring your week has to be overly complicated and then it ends up not working for them because they're trying to bend and twist themselves into a system that doesn't work for them and their lifestyle. Or they go, oh, I don't, that's too rigid. I don't, I like the freedom, right? So I like to say good planning is like the bones in your body. It creates that structure. It doesn't make you run, jump, hop, or skip, but it allows you to do those things. When I want to run, I can because I have a skeleton. It creates that framework. So it also has a little bit of looseness to it, right? Every time you fall down, you don't break a bone. 
because they're a little bit flexible. They're strong, but they're flexible. So the five P's is a system to create that beautiful structure while giving you the grace and flexibility for, you know, life, baseball camps and <laughs> Mother's Day out and doing all the other things in your world that are not necessarily just your business. So the first P is to purge, get it out of your head and onto a piece of paper. You know, you're using your head as a big filing cabinet of, oh, I need to do this and oh, I need to do that. Get it out on paper. Think of it as a brainstorm. Don't worry about what it looks like. Just get it out on paper. Now, I do this purge twice. I do it once on Sunday afternoons with my family. That's my team at home, right? And I want to make sure they all know where we're going and we're all rowing the boat in the same direction. And I do it on Mondays with my team at work. So that's our first P is purge. The second P is process. Treat each day as a new opportunity. The big mistake I see a lot of people making is they sit down on Sunday or they sit down on Monday and they map out the entire week. Here's what I'm going to do on Monday. Here's what I'm going to do on Tuesday. Here's what I'm going to do on Wednesday, right? And that feels like a good idea. And Monday's great. Let's say Monday is super productive. Tuesday, you wake up with a sick kid in your bed, right? Or you wake up with allergies or something has thrown you off track. Tuesday is a hot mess express and nothing gets accomplished. Well, if you've planned out Tuesday and Wednesday, you wake up Wednesday and you're like, I'm already behind. I'm already feeling stressed. And it's not even 8 a.m., right? So we need to allow that each day you're going to wake up. How do I feel? Does today feel like super productive or today, does today feel like a lighter day? So give yourself that grace to really process what you want to accomplish that day. So that takes me literally five minutes each morning to just sit down. What do I want to accomplish for today and today only? I'm looking at my purge list that I made earlier in the week, and I'm pulling from that to decide. And that brings me to my third P. So we had so far purge, process, third P is prioritize. All right. Now, as you're figuring out what you want to do for today, let's prioritize it. What's most important? Put that at the top and then make your list. The mistake that a lot of people do is they have a to-do list that is like six miles long. And then we wonder why we feel like we haven't accomplished enough. I want you instead to choose to prioritize what are the three to five things today that I want to accomplish and list those out in terms of priority, right? And I have a whole priority list system. I have a whole video you can watch on how to organize your to-do list to, to do this because it's really, really simple and it takes the exact same amount of time, just a little more intentionality. So you're going to prioritize. That's our third P. That fourth P is to protect, right? Now you need to protect your time. Don't let everybody just jump into your calendar whenever they want. Have these blocks of time really marked out. You know, I, I know that the morning time is a really great productive time for me. So I make sure I have blocks in my calendar that are meetings with myself to really dive deep into the work. So don't feel like your calendar has to be an open book for anyone. Protect your time and create those containers like we talked about, especially if you're theming your days. Okay, I know Monday mornings from 10 a.m. to 12, that's my marketing time and just start blocking that out. Our fifth P is to propel. Let's create a little momentum. Today was great, let's make tomorrow start off even easier. It's kind of like trying to ride a bike at the bottom of a hill and starting at a dead stop. It's really hard. But if you pedal for a little bit, you have a little bit of momentum to get up that hill, right? That's what we wanna do for the following day. So let's propel and really create momentum for tomorrow. So at the end of the day, I take five minutes to make myself, and I call it the five minutes to peak productivity, I make a list of the things I want to accomplish for tomorrow, what I'm grateful for, what I got accomplished today, and I rip that off, I place it on my desk, and you know how I start the next day? By reading that list. I look at the things I was grateful for. I look at the things that I knew I wanted to work on today. I look at what I accomplished yesterday. I start with a little tiny win, and then I pull from that list to go, okay, I know what I'm working on today. So that's the five P's, really, really simple to do. Purge, process, prioritize, protect, and propel. Oh, I love it. What's one of the best books you've read? Uh, well, should we say The Joy of Missing Out, my book? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, I do love that book. You have to love your book if you're going to write it and put it out in the world. But um, it's funny, you know, I told you I didn't have any business experience the Joy of Missing Out was named a top 10 business book of the year by Fortune wow. magazine. So kind of crazy, right? Yeah. And the funny thing is, it's a book about life, not just work. 
So. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what does it mean to you to make an impact? I think it means being aligned. I like to say at the end of the day, I got to go to bed and my head has to, has to hit the pillow and I got to feel good about what I did today. So do I like who I am? Do I like what I did? Do I like where I'm going? Do I need to make adjustments? So yeah. that to me is really how I make the impact is being aligned with where I know I want to go. I love it. Where can we connect with you? Yeah, the best place to find me is tanyadalton.com. You can find links to my books there. The books are available at Barnes & Noble, uh, Amazon, anywhere books are sold, Target. Um, you can also find my podcast there, The Intentional Advantage. Or you can even, wherever you're listening to this podcast, you can, after we have finished today's show, you can go ahead and do a search for my name or The Intentional Advantage, and you'll find me there. I'm, I'm almost 300 episodes in, so there's quite an archive of information there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tanya, for being on the show. Yeah, thanks so much for having me.